How do you make a great decision every time? And I don't just mean make it. I mean actually drive organizational change. I mean, do you just come up with something and then persuade everybody? Do you inspire them with some great tagline? Do you manipulate them all by adjusting the incentives? I actually have a PhD in organizational decision making. And I thought I knew it all until I met this man, Mel Harris of Sony Pictures. In the early 90s, I was working on, with Sony Pictures on their strategy. They were under a lot of threat. There was the rise of home theater. Content was no longer as powerful as it was. They didn't know what to do. And I had this great job of working with these guys to figure out where to take the company next. But Mel Harris told me everything was wrong. Everything I thought I knew was wrong. <laughs> you see, let me tell you a little about Mayor, Mel. He was really brilliant. Intellectually, he was amazing. He knew that they had to do something different. The way a movie or television program works is you produce it and you dig this gigantic financial hole. And then in theaters, you dig yourself a little bit way out of it. And then you release to the next thing, like uh, maybe home video or something, and you, you make a little bit more. And then it goes to television, you make a little bit more. And like seven, eight years later, through this massive chain of events, maybe you actually get all that money back. And the problem was content wasn't as powerful as it once was. And so what they needed to do was own more of their channel so that on every one of these steps, they could squeeze a little bit more money out of it and thereby return to more reliable profitability. So he was smart. He knew that. But he was also people smart. Mel Harris was one of the few survivors as an executive in an absolutely cutthroat industry. Most of these executives lasted maybe two, three years. The number one method of promotion was betrayal. You backstab the guy above you and take his spot. And so everyone's always looking behind their shoulders and trying to figure out who's going to come after them. I one year, uh, and Mel had been there for like 10 years. And one day I asked Mel, Mel, what's your secret? He says, oh, David, it's very simple. I smoke. <laughs> you smoke? Yes. You see, smoking is illegal in this building. And when I smoke, I go out of the fourth floor where all the executives are, and I go behind the dumpster with everybody else. And I have a choice. And I can either be that SOB executive with my fancy cuffs and my little kerchief in there, and everyone will be afraid of me. And I'll feel great. They'll treat me like royalty. Or I can go down there and I can piss and moan along with the rest of them about how bad it is that we all have to smoke behind the dumpster. And I hold it as a sacred trust. I actually don't abuse these guys. And what they do is they tell me what's actually going on. And I'm many steps ahead of all the rest of the executives. So that's how I survive. So this guy's a genius. He's smart and he knows people. Well, there I am. I've spent six months working on where should Sony Pictures go next? What should they buy to fill out their distribution channels? I've done the facts. I've done the figures. And it's a rare moment. Because rarely does the analysis come together so strongly and so powerfully and so clearly. Usually there's some ambiguity. This was like a no-brainer kind of thing. And I'm working with Mel to prepare for the executive retreat. This is all the big folks. And I'm working with Mel. And uh, I'm explaining to Mel about the strategy. And my explanation looks something like this. Uh, so I go through the numbers and the facts and the figures of this. And uh, Mel says, I don't, uh, David, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, well, let me try again. And you see these facts and these figures and how that's bigger and these are smaller and do more of the big stuff. And David, I don't get it. Well, I'm starting to get nervous because I know this guy's smart enough to get it. And I start to sweat a little. He says, David, you're going to, have to, you're going to have to simplify this story a lot. I just, I just don't get it. And I said, OK, let me try a different way. I said, uh, Mel, what you guys all want to do is buy up domestic channels. These are things where, like in the United States, right? well-developed markets because it makes you feel big and powerful. The problem is you're paying retail for all that. So there's no room to make money. But in the early 90s, the Berlin Wall has fallen. Eastern Europe is trying to reintegrate. They're rebuilding their entertainment inter infrastructure. And there are companies out there desperate for your content, and they don't have much money. So you go in there, you make deals, you get in the ground floor, and you help them grow. And that's how you make a lot of money. That's how you get a lot there. You guys understand that story? 
Mel says, I'm sorry, David, I don't get it. <laughs> and I think, oh shit, this is the moment where I'm going to be fired. And I start sweating, and I start shaking, and he looks at me, and I said, Mel, that's all I got. And I'm waiting for the guillotine to drop. And he says, David, you're a smart guy. You know what your problem is? Uh, no. He says, you don't know how to explain something. I'm like, what? I've been explaining this for an hour and a half, and you don't get it. He says, David, what you need to do is tell them that we could have owned B Sky B. I'm like, what? B Sky B was a satellite company. B Sky B was one of the first satellites that was able to broadcast over a whole continent. And at this time, it was the most profitable company in history. And Mel tells me they could have owned B Sky B. And I said, what the fuck? <laughs> and Mel says, look, we're digging our way out of this hole. So we extract every single dollar we can get from a movie. And B Sky B came to us a few years ago, and they needed, they needed a lot of money because they're launching a satellite, and they need content to be legitimized. And they wanted our content. And we extracted every dollar from them. We negotiated for top money. And they said, uh, they, they said give us a little discount, and we'll give you a lot of equity. We should have made a different choice because we could have owned B Sky B. So we come to the executive retreat, and I'm there explaining my story, and I explain, and the eyes glaze over, and I explain more, and then I realize that I have to make a different choice. And I say, you could have owned B Sky B. And the executives go from sort of this sort of thing to, what? We could have owned B Sky B? Oh, shit, he's right. We could have owned B Sky B. And in 10, 15 seconds, with the right story, I landed the recommendation, and perhaps more importantly, gave those people a path from the past to the future that guided their action. And that was it. It had to be the right story. And it was more powerful and more motivating than all the analysis I had done. And what I realized through all this wire brushing was that I had spoken to their heads. I really had applied the rigor. I really did know what direction you had to go. It was great direction but I spoke to their heads. And it's, that's not enough. And what Mel was doing was speaking to their hearts. And that's done through, <laughs> through narrative and through storytelling. And that's what motivates strong action. Now, you can make an argument, and you can have a useless PowerPoint presentation and argue and persuade. You can actually get people all fired up and inspired. And then what you get is a sort of riot or lots of well-meaning action. But to put them together, rigor plus the right story, that's how you get a great decision every time. And what I've come to realize about Mel is I had scars from this, this experience for a long time. I mean, it's no fun to get a wire brushing. But I've come to realize he knew people. And maybe in Mel, I had a great mentor. And he was actually looking out for me. And so that's what it takes, head and heart integrated to get a great decision every time. Thank you. Thank you.